Hiring Hoosiers, an initiative from RTV6 that works to connect you to jobs, career development resources, training programs, and educational paths. So RTV6 is telling stories that focus on opening doors, growing skills, and finding new options for your job and your life. This is RTV6's Hiring Hoosiers Report. It is estimated that more than one million jobs must be filled in our state over the next 10 years. And now the Marion County Sheriff's Office has plenty of open positions to fill. RTV6's Mark Mullen sat down with the sheriff to find out what he needs in every applicant. The Marion County Sheriff's Office is launching an ambitious effort to hire 90 people in 90 days. We have been trying to get out the word everywhere that we are hiring. Sheriff Kerry Forrestal needs 43 new 911 dispatchers and 47 new detention deputies in the jail. 16 months. That's how long Deputy Kenyon Sincere has been here. It's been a great experience because it's always something new. He's one of roughly 425 deputies dealing with hundreds of inmates, processing them in and out of the jail, feeding them, and preparing them for court proceedings. I can compare it to being in the Marine Corps uh, because it's that type of family environment to where we have to look out for one another, and our success depends on each other. Be as positive as possible. Uh, don't be afraid to learn. At MCSO's 9 911 center. Some new hires are already undergoing six weeks of paid classroom training before another four weeks of hands-on training. Still, the department needs dozens more dispatchers. The sheriff admits there's some work to do when it comes to retaining 911 dispatchers, but he says it's time to get to the root of that issue. Just this past week, we have a private industry in another county that hired two of our dispatchers away because they're paying about eight and ten thousand dollars more than we are even though we got everyone a three thousand dollar raise to this initiation it just makes it a challenge so we're a training ground for a lot of other surrounding counties and other agencies we need to continue to look at that because the investment we have to bring up a skilled worker and then they leave, we start all over again. The sheriff tells RTV6 he's trying to work with the mayor and the city county council to secure even more money to offer more competitive salaries to retain workers. What's the location? Jaquita Watkins started as a dispatcher nine years ago. It was a lot of calls coming in, very busy, very loud, you know, very fast paced. Now she's a shift supervisor, proof there's room for upward mobility. Definitely, like I'm nine years on and I'm a supervisor, so I started out as a 9 dispatcher, then quickly was able to get promoted to control operator, then a training officer, supervisor, and of course you got managers above that. A high stress line of work that comes with rewards of saving lives and keeping people safe. Mark Mullins, RTV6. The sheriff has added some new incentives to attract more applicants. For example, detention deputies automatically land on the fast track to become sergeants. The starting salary for detention deputies and 911 dispatchers is around $34,000 a year, all along with benefits, health coverage, and a pension. To learn more about the positions and the requirements, you can call 317-327-1508. Zero eight. You can also head online to the Marion County Sheriff's website to find out more information on those jobs. We have that number and much more information at our website at HiringHoosiers.com. When it comes to equal pay for women, you're not going to like what I have to say because we live in one of the worst states for equal pay for women. At a rally at the Indiana State House today, advocates and lawmakers push for equal pay in the state. In 2016, full-time working men earned a salary of $49,000, while women brought home slightly more than $35,000. Rima Shahid, the executive director for Women for Change, said the advocates are simply looking for equal pay for equal work. Women are being paid less simply because we are women. Um, across industries, across different sectors, we're seeing women with the same job that men have being paid less. Women are earning higher ed degrees at a higher rate than ever before. Regardless of background, regardless of anything else, we're getting paid less just because we're women. Uh, so keep this in mind as well. There are wage discrimination bills up for debate in both the House and the Senate, but neither has received a hearing just yet.
Getting military members into a satisfying job is more complicated than it looks. You're looking at video from today as well from the Indiana State House for Military and Veterans Legislative Day. Tonight we're taking a closer look at the barriers facing veterans as they enter the civilian workforce with a couple of leaders from Operation Job Ready Veterans. So tell me about this program, exciting way really to get the people that serve our country, the, the very best of the best, uh, to get them transitioned back into the workforce. So first of all, I want to thank you for serving our country. That, that has to be the most important thing. And please give, give thanks to all those that come through the program. We do appreciate their service. But when thank they you. come home, right, when they come home, we want them to be back into society. So how does that work? How do you make that happen? You want to deal with transition? Well, <clears throat> The biggest deal is when you leave service, you really don't know what you're going to do. Everybody likes to go home. For me personally, transition has been one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Uh, you, Once you get out, you kind of come home, you think it's going to be easy. Hey, i got a great background. I'll get my resume together. And it really doesn't happen like that. Uh, you know, your health care is taken away from you. You know, if you just get out and you're not retired, your pay is, is interrupted. Uh, so you are dealing with a multitude of transitional issues that you don't really realize that, you, that you're going to have. And so for someone that went through the transition, what for you, for both of you, was the toughest part to get over um, to be able to do what you normally would do? Because at the end of the day, both men and women who serve are disciplined, they're hardworking, they have a good work ethic, integrity, all the things you want from an employee, right? You so, have them, So right? exactly going into your point, you're talking about a culture clash. These are two different cultures of a military culture and a civilian culture. I always trusted the person on my left, the, the person on my right, to do a job because they were trained to do a job. Civilian world, very humbling to me. You know, I thought we were all working towards the same goal. Found out real quick that was not always the case. What are the things, if I were an employer, I want that lady or I want that man because they do bring certain things that, you know, compared to the civilian world, they may not have. So uh, I would imagine that serving in the military comes with a gold standard. Well, that's well, the way I see it, right? I mean, I don't know how you see it, but that's the way I see it. It absolutely does. So going back to your point about the groups uh, of, you know, but when you go interview, you're, interv you're interviewing as an individual. Going back to the culture piece of military and civilian, military individuals, no matter what branch you, you are, when you go up against them boards, we do not talk about we or us, us as an individual. We talk in groups, our platoon, our company, our battalion, our squadron. So when we go to job interview, we fail miserably because we have never been able to talk about ourselves. And what we do is tell them, once you get your foot in the door, go back to being that team leader, that teammate. And what we found through, through our results is those people, those individuals, uh, men and women fleet up through the companies fast and the companies call us, we want more of them. That was Gene Anderson and John Spagnogel from Operation Job Ready Veterans. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, to get in touch with them about what they can do to help you as a veteran in the transition period, we have their phone number and other contact information on our website right now at HiringHoosiers.com. Coming up, Central Indiana needs more nurses. A new opportunity to find the right fit for the Hiring Hoosiers report continues only on RTV6. Clues Memorial Hall. We're just getting started this week as the Hiring Hoosiers report continues right here on RTV6. Many teens see summer jobs as a quick way to make some money or hang out in the sun. But it could also be much more than that. Tomorrow we'll explain why a job with Indy Parks could lead to a lifelong career. That's on Good Morning Indiana beginning at 6 a.m. and then at 7 right here on RTV6. When it comes to your health care, let's face it, nurses, they carry a lot of responsibility and do a lot of hard work to keep all of us healthy. So here's a new nursing opportunity right here in central Indiana. Eskenazi Health is hosting a nurse networking career event next week. It's open to all registered nurses and up and coming and upcoming nursing graduates. And if you know Spanish, bilingual nurses are needed. The event is next Thursday, the 21st from 3 to 6 at Eskenazi Health. So there you have it. Kevin? 